exciting news. Exciting to me, I guess. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics just released a new position paper on vegetarianism and veganism. Vegetarian Dietary Patterns for Adults, a position paper of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Presumably, this is meant to at least partially replace their 2016 position. The one that myself and many others have quoted, have referenced when talking about vegan nutrition. I think I still have it pinned on my Twitter or X or whatever. I don't know. I don't use that anymore. You might have already heard about this paper because there's been some talk about it and I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's talk about the differences. So in 2016, the authors concluded that number one, plant-based diets are better for the environment. Number two, vegetarians and vegans are likely at a lower risk for certain conditions like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, certain cancers. And three, well-planned vegetarian or even vegan diets are fine for all stages, but veganism does require more work. It is more restrictive. For instance, since you're less likely to get enough B12, enough iodine without supplementation. In the new 2025 paper, the authors conclude, and these are all different authors, by the way, we'll talk about that more later. Number one, plant-based diets are better for the environment. Number two, vegetarians and vegans are likely at reduced risk for various health conditions. And number three, vegetarianism and veganism is fine for adults as long as it's appropriately planned. So mostly the same as the 2016 paper, although there are some differences. So I said that they both mention environment environment, but there's much less mention in the new one. The 2016, they had a whole section on it. This one, it's like a couple sentences. There's more focus in the new one on who the paper is for. It's for professionals. They even state this in the abstract. They talk about how doctors and dietitians can help vegetarians by learning about vegetarianism, you know, nutrient needs, also listening to the individual patient, right, and respecting cultural practices. They also, I think, briefly mention hospitals right? Hospitals should be providing plant-based options. There's a new section on processed plant alternatives, talking about the pros and cons there. They also talk about the quality of the evidence in terms of, you know, potential benefits from vegetarianism and veganism, saying that it largely isn't great. I think they say low to very low for most of the studies that were included in the systematic reviews that they looked at. And this goes for the potential cons as well. There's just not very good evidence. They also mentioned research gaps like vegetarianism and hypertension. This is something I think was sorely missing from the 2016 paper. I don't think they talked about quality or research gaps at all. And finally, the biggest difference, the thing you might have heard about, the kids. What about the children? The 2025 paper is focused solely on adults. You can see this in the title. And some have seemingly gleefully taken this as the Academy no longer supports vegetarianism for children. Uh, I'm guessing they didn't actually read the paper. Facilitating vegetarian dietary patterns in individuals younger than age 18 years and or for those pregnant or lactating requires specific guidance that considers how vegetarian dietary patterns may influence these crucial stages of growth and development and is outside the scope of this position paper. Outside the scope of does not mean we think kids need meat. It means outside the scope of, it means this paper is focused on adults, which makes sense to me. I, I totally agree with them. Guidance for pregnant women, for babies and toddlers in particular, requires more attention. These are growing and developing people, adults or not. So I would not be surprised if a separate paper looking at these populations, specifically pregnancy and kids, is forthcoming. And I also wouldn't be surprised if the conclusion is largely the same as the 2016 paper. A well-planned vegetarian or vegan diet can meet the nutrient needs of people during all stages of life. Then again, I also wouldn't be surprised if the conclusion is a bit more reserved or even that you know, vegetarianism is fine for kids, but veganism is just too restrictive. That would not surprise me either. Assuming this paper is coming, I'm personally really looking forward to it. I think the new 2025 paper on adults was definitely needed. And yeah, I look forward to the same sort of scientific rigor applied to vegetarianism and children. Assuming the same authors would be involved. A lot of assumptions here. <laughs> to be clear, I am looking forward to the paper whether the authors believe veganism is appropriate for kids or not. 
unlike many vegans, you know, I, I've said a lot of times on this channel, I don't really support veganism for kids. Yes, I have three vegan kids. They've been vegan the entire time since conception with normal growth, normal development, good health. Uh, but I'm better than you. I'm joking, of course, but, you know, it, it does take a lot of knowledge and practice and organization to make veganism work for kids, to make it healthy for kids. You really do need dietitian level knowledge, know-how, and most of us just don't have that. And most of us don't have access to people who do. You know, I would love to say, well, take your kids to a dietitian, talk about their diet with them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the truth is most dietitians know very little about vegan nutrition, especially vegan nutrition for kids. Do they even know what to look for in a vegan kid's diet other than protein and B12? Do they even know cow's milk is how most kids meet their iodine needs and that vegan kids are very likely going to be deficient without supplementation? I seriously doubt it. I mean, until recently, most vegan sources didn't mention iodine for vegan kids. If you go to the VRG vegetarian resource group, their feeding vegan kids page, it still does not mention iodine. And this seemingly has had consequences. There's a case study of a little baby who got very sick with like undetectable levels of iodine in their blood. And once they were supplemented while well, they were put on the, what's the drug that you take for like hypothyroidism? The baby was put on that and improved. There's no evidence of the parents being anti-supplement or anything. The mother was taking a prenatal. Obviously they were taking the baby to the doctor. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the parents just had no idea. They had no idea that iodine was an issue for vegan kids. I've just read too many articles. I've seen too many videos showing malnourished vegan kids and deficient vegan diets. And I'm not talking about the cases that get all of the attention, the extreme ones where the parents weren't giving their kids any B12 or they were just feeding them fruits and vegetables or they were giving them soy milk instead of formula. I'm talking about popular vegan YouTubers making like what my kid ate today videos showcasing healthy vegan ways for kids to eat, offering tips and tricks. And then I watch the video and it's like, okay, there's fruits and vegetables, but where's the iodine? Where's the calcium? Sometimes where's the B12? The one I just watched recently that seems so great on the face of it, but then calcium. There's no calcium in the soy milk because it's not fortified. There's little to no calcium rich greens. That is not good. That is not an appropriate, properly planned vegan diet for a kid or an adult. I used to get really mad watching these videos because I would think like, oh my God, come on guys, it's not that hard. But now I think it is, it is that hard. You know, I'm very privileged, I guess. I have an advantage because this is my job. Unlike most vegan YouTubers, influencers, whatever, who focus on making recipes, I focus on the nutrition stuff and the ethics stuff. I am constantly reading and learning about vegan nutrition. Like so much of this is just part of my soul now. <laughs> I think if you gave me any essential nutrient, I could tell you, you know, for a, a one to three year old, for a four to eight year old, the RDA, maybe not every single one, because like, you know, magnesium, manganese, you're going to get those on a vegan diet. So like, you know, whatever. But off the top of my head, I could probably list the RDA for most of the essential nutrients and the best sources, you know, vegan sources for these nutrients. Feeding vegan kids is hard and there is virtually no support for parents to help them do it properly. So yeah, you know, again, I would not be surprised if a forthcoming paper from the Academy on veganism and kids concludes that veganism is just too restrictive, it's too risky, and I would not necessarily disagree with that. I also want to talk about conflict of interest because I remember this being a, a big thing with the last paper. The three authors of the last paper were all uh, vegans or at least vegetarians. I think they were all vegan. Vasanto Molina, she co-wrote Becoming Vegetarian and Becoming Vegan. Winston Craig is a Seventh-day Adventist and I think like a lifelong vegetarian. And then the late Susan Levin was a vegan. She was in some vegan documentaries. I think she was in What the Health. In this new one, we have a, a similar thing going on. So we have Sud 
Suda Ra, I'm sorry, Raj, I'm just going to say Raj, vegetarian. She's chaired vegetarian groups. Uh, Nancy Guest, she is vegan. Matthew J. Landry, he's a researcher, likely vegetarian, I would say, given his work is largely on vegetarianism and health. Reed Mangles, of course, vegan, highly influential in terms of vegan nutrition, especially vegan nutrition for kids. I think she's written most, if not all, of the, you know, articles and whatnot on vrg.org about veganism for kids. Roman Pollock, at least vegetarian, maybe even vegan. He has a, a vegan vegetarian mother and her baby course. I think he has a couple books on vegetarianism as well. And then finally, Mary Rosga. She, like, uh, who did I say before? Landry, likely vegetarian, um, several papers on vegetarianism. So yeah, I can see the response being, well, of course, of course, vegetarians are going to say vegetarianism is healthy. And yeah, you know, this is kind of a tough one, because on the one hand, who better to be involved in a, you know, sweeping paper on vegetarianism and health than people who have studied vegetarianism and health for years, even decades. Well, the people who do that are very likely going to be vegetarian, right? Either they were vegetarian previously, and that's what led them to do this kind of research, or the opposite, they started that kind of research and then were convinced to go vegetarian. It's just highly unlikely that dietitians and researchers with the you know, expertise on vegetarianism are not vegetarian themselves. The cognitive dissonance <laughs> you would experience day in and day out researching vegetarianism and seeing all of the potential benefits of not eating meat, you know, yeah. Plus, conflicts of interest usually deal with financial gain. We don't have a lot of that here. Most of these people don't have books or anything to sell. And even if they did, it's hard to see how a paper for healthcare professionals would really lead to a lot of sales. However, many have argued for declaring non-financial interests as well. I mean, you are technically supposed to, but it's kind of subjective. You know, where do you draw the line? But, you know, I, I personally would have no problem with, oh, here, you know, Reed, she's one of the authors and yeah, she has books on veganism. She is a prominent vegan. You know, I would have no problem having that in a conflict of interest section. But then again, don't meat eaters have a conflict of interest here, a non-financial one? Aren't they biased toward eating meat? I think many people would say, well, no, you know, vegetarianism, veganism, it's a, a lifestyle, it's a philosophy encompassing ethics and environmentalism, etc. Whereas omnivorism, it's just a diet, like it's not an identity. I agree with Melanie Joy that this just isn't true. A philosophy does not have to be explicit to affect how we think and what we do to make us biased. She coined the term carnism as the opposite of veganism. It represents this invisible belief system that omnivores hold about eating meat. In meat eating cultures around the world, people typically don't think about why they eat certain animals, but not others, or why they eat any animals at all. But when eating animals is not a necessity, which is the case for many people in the world today, then it's a choice and choices always stem from beliefs. It's a tough thing. You know, conflict of interest here isn't as simple as X author is an employee for the company that makes the drug they're studying in this paper. Everybody is potentially biased for or against eating meat. And finally, a good argument against, you know, declaring conflicts of interest in this case. The evidence is clear that plant-based, meaning mostly plants in this case, not just veganism, is best for health, which is why numerous non-vegetarian organizations across the globe now recommend a plant-based diet. If this 2025 and the 2016, if, if these papers were the only ones saying vegetarianism and veganism is fine, then yeah, sure, look at conflicts of interest. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to know your thoughts. And of course, like and subscribe and hit the bell. And thank you so much to all of the people who support the channel, all of my members here on YouTube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons. I'm about to record the first one. The second one I do every month is a controversial topic, something unrelated to veganism. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. Oh, another difference 
this one I really like between the 2025 and 2016. In the 2016, they have a list of other, you know, resources on vegetarianism that they recommend. And they list PCRM and nutritionfacts.org. Those are not in the 2025 paper, which is great. They do still have veganhealth.org. Awesome. And they also include the veganrd.com. And if you're confused why I would be glad that they're not <laughs> recommending PCRM and uh, Nutrition Facts Michael Greger, then you can check out my recent video on how not to die. I do a pretty detailed deep dive on that. And I also have an older video on PCRM. Actually, I think it's on Dr. Neil Barnard specifically, but point is, I thought that was another good change. 